Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sanket Pisat and uh, welcome to the case discussion of the uh, case number 15 which I had posted in the endogyne training group. For those of you who have not yet joined, I would welcome you to join the group by visiting our website www.endogynetraining.com where we discuss relevant cases and real life dilemmas in gynec endoscopy. So please make it a point to visit the site and join our group so that you can also take part in the discussions that happen. Again our standard disclaimer, uh, medicine is not an exact science and these are my personal opinions. They may be different from conventional teaching but if you have a difference of opinion I'd love to hear from you so please leave your comments in the comment section below the video and I'm going to post this and the surgical video uh, in succession. So this is the uh, image that I had posted in the group and you can see that there is the bladder which has been shown to be anterior and the uterus over here the pubis is over here so clearly this is an anterior pathology I have written SE which itself gives away the fact that it is a scar ectopic pregnancy but it is an anterior pathology this is the endometrial lining over here this is the cervix over here and this entire thing is the scar ectopic pregnancy now one important thing that you should know you should understand is try to see the black rim between the sac and the bladder so if you see this is the this whitish rim is the fat plane and this black would be the wall of the bladder and you can see that this this is the thin black rim that i'm talking about is the thinned out anterior myometrium above the scar from here to here and you can see that it is extremely thinned out okay if one were to measure this this would definitely be less than two millimeters or one millimeter maybe and so for this particular case of course we'll discuss later laparoscopic surgery is the only way out there is no way to perform a hysteroscopic surgery with such a thin myometrium over it so having understood that let's move on to the next question does she require surgery yes she does require surgery it could rupture at any time so you may not do it in the dead of the night but she has to be posted for surgery on priority basis what's the ideal route of surgery like i said before laparoscopic is the only way to go in this patient and hysteroscopic surgery is reserved for those patients who uh, do not want further pregnancies and there is a very small sac inside with a good thick myometrium above the sac so at least three millimeters or more is the site where is the place where you would consider doing a hysteroscopic surgery sorry about that so is it an emergency case or an elective case personally i would go with emergency case because uh, this the possibility of rupture is there so like i said you may not do it immediately but maybe in the coming day at least this has to be tackled without uh, delay then coming to the last question what is the most important risk you would consider i think most people have answered correctly bladder injury and bleeding both are important risks and in the video that follows i'm going to tell you how we can avoid these two risks and how we can uh, manage uh, both of them by proper dissection as well as uterine artery ligation so uh, that will be discussed in the video that follows now uh, before we go on to the actual video let me discuss with you uh, what is the difference between management of a scar ectopic pregnancy versus an isthmocele and where is the place for hysteroscopic management because I find that many people are not clear on this concept. So uh, an isthmocele is different from a scar ectopic pregnancy. An isthmocele is a defect. Okay, An isthmocele is a defect that has been left behind by the previous surgery which is uh, uh, a, a thinning out of the anterior myometrium at the previous scar site and a scar ectopic is a pregnancy which has implanted on this defect so though they are same they are different in some ways uh, like i said if you have to manage a scar ectopic laparoscopically versus hysteroscopically the dif the differ the difference between the two would be the residual myometrial thickness and at least three millimeters of thickness is required for you to consider doing a hysteroscopic surgery this is also considering the fact that 
you will uh, be only removing the POCs in a hysteroscopic surgery. Okay, we were only removing the POCs in a hysteroscopic surgery. It is very important to understand that no repair of the scar is being done because it's not possible to strengthen a <coughs> scar hysteroscopically. So you are only going to be removing the POCs and no repair of the scar is going to be performed. So having understood that, let us try to understand what is the concept of uh, treatment of isthmocene and which cases should you consider lap and which cases should you consider hysteroscopic surgery. So quickly I will draw this over here. This is the uterus. Okay. Uh, this is the cervix like this. This is the endometrial uh, lining and this is the scar okay so the scar niche is kind of like this okay or maybe maybe i'll make it a little less than that so the niche will be something like this and then the top layer will be like this so first when having understood this first let us take a look at what are the questions that come to mind first of all the first question is is there an isthmocele or not so isthmocele yes or no because every defect cannot be labeled as isthmus so by definition and i will try to attach the reference to the paper this is not my definition this is published evidence by definition if you have a cesarean scar defect or an out pouching that means this distance from here to here this distance if it is two millimeters or more greater than or equal to 2 millimeters of out pouching of scar then this is considered isthmocene along with that the residual myometrial thickness over here this one okay this residual myometrial thickness has to be less than 5 millimeters so only if both of these criteria are satisfied the out pouching is more than 2 millimeters and the rmt is less than 5 millimeters then we can call it an isthmocele in the first place otherwise she has no isthmocele so that's one now coming to the fact if she has an isthmocele how are we going to manage the isthmocele is it a hysteroscopic repair or a laparoscopic repair so for that let us try to understand the whole concept of management of isthmocele and hystero versus lap starts with one concept which is the rmt residual myometrial thickness the first question to be asked is is the rmt less than three millimeter or is the rmt more than three millimeter so this is the three millimeter criteria let us take the first clinical situation where the rmt is less than three millimeter okay so that means this is less than three millimeters and this is important because the sonologist has to give you this information without this information you cannot decide okay so what you need from uh, the sonologist is the RMT and this the sonologist has to give you on transvaginal sonography. The, it is TVS is enough. There is no need for MRI. Then uh, let's say 3 millimeters and if the RMT is less than 3 millimeters. Okay. And if the RMT is less than 3 millimeters, the next question to be asked is, uh, does she want pregnancy? So I'm sorry about this. Yeah. So the next question to be asked is, does she want further pregnancy okay if she wants further pregnancy then that means you require to reinforce the scar and if you require to reinforce the scar there is no way to do that hysteroscopically so if the answer to this is yes then she goes for lap repair i hope this is clear then if the answer is no okay if the answer is no she does not want pregnancy then the question to be asked is, remember we are talking about isthmocele okay we are not talking about we are not talking about scar ectopic pregnancy here so if she does not want pregnancy the next question to be asked is does she have aub okay if the answer is no right if the answer is no then this patient does not want pregnancy does not have AUB and so this patient is a patient who requires no treatment. She is asymptomatic, she has no problem, what are you going to treat? So there is no treatment required for this patient. 
if this patient requires if this patient has a ub so yes then because the residual myometrial thickness is less than 3 mm the possibility of doing a hysteroscopy is not there in this patient and this patient goes for a lap repair i hope this concept is understood okay then uh, let us go back with the so this you understood for less than 3 mm now let us go to the more than 3 mm criteria so let me just delete all this and we'll discuss the more than 3 mm category because this is very important to understand and i find that cases are posted by a lot of consultants without understanding how this has to be approached properly so uh, let's see this we are talking about now rmt more than 3 mm okay again the same question is to be asked does she want pregnancy this is the first question to be asked if the answer is yes again by a hysteroscopic surgery i cannot repair a scar okay i can best uh, enhance the scar which i will talk about now but if the answer is yes then she requires lap repair okay if she wants pregnancy if she does not want pregnancy then the next question to be asked is does she have aub and if the answer is no then that means she has she does not want pregnancy she does not have aub this patient requires no treatment if the answer is yes then this is interesting because the residual myometrial thickness is more than 3 and she has aub so this patient is the only candidate for hysteroscopic repair i hope this concept is clear please watch the video again if you have not understood and i am going to show you what we do in the hysteroscopic repair so when we do a lap repair of course you have understood that we freshen the scar and we suture it back i am going to show you this in the video that i post after this as well but what exactly is done in the hysteroscopic repair so what is done in the hysteroscopic repair is we do not do any repair a hystros in a hysteroscopic repair a resectoscope loop is used and the problem with a patient who is having aub and a, a isthmocele is that the menstrual blood comes over here the menstrual blood comes here gets collected in this pouch and keeps discharging outside from time to time because of which she has dark blackish colored blood and aub what we do in hysteroscopic surgery we are simply going to take a resectoscope and cut this edge off okay so this will get shaved off and this will become a straight line so the menstrual blood will not get place to collect here anymore it will directly flow out from here so in hysteroscopic surgery what you need to understand is that we are practically enlarging the defect not reducing the defect okay and this surgery is not for people who want pregnancy because you are enlarging the defect so it's not going to help this is indicated only for those whose rmt is more than 3 mm patient has aub and does not want pregnancy so i hope this management is completely clear this video will now be followed by the laparoscopic management of scar ectopic pregnancy so please do watch the video and let me know if you have any questions or comments thank you very much for your patience and for listening